back again to another UML tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to explain how you can uh, model a class that uses overloaded methods. So let me first just start by modeling a class which I'm going to call a very simple calculator and naturally I am going to attach the uh, Java class profile okay so there we go so what is method overloading method overloading basically means that there are two methods in the same class that have the same name but have a different parameter list and this gives us the benefit for example uh, what I will demonstrate if I'm going to create a method with uh, certain with for example integer parameters I can also write a version of that method with double parameters so uh, and the benefit that you get for this is that if you are using that class you can always invoke the, sa the same method name in the same situation even though you have different parameters so I hope with my example I will clarify that a bit more so like I said we have two methods in the same class with different parameters return type does not matter so let's create two operations okay and since this is a simple calculator I'm gonna name the method add two numbers and I'm gonna name the other one also add two numbers okay and actually that should be exactly identical else it doesn't work and you can already see that I'm getting a bit of a warning here it says hey you already have it add two numbers in your class that is because the difference comes with the parameters so let's add some parameters so I'm gonna create a parameter num1 and this parameter is an input parameter of the type integer then add another parameter num2 with the, with the type integer and add one last parameter a result and if you add two integers together you also get an integer so the return type will be integer there we go okay then now the overloaded method now, as you can see my warning has already disappeared because the methods are no longer identical but the difference in this case has to come from different parameters parameter list can be different in terms of data type in terms of number of parameters uh, basically as long as it's not integer num1 integer num2 uh, variable names however do not matter but data types do okay so let's add two parameters in this case as well so again I'm gonna name it num1 because name doesn't really affect it but the data type does uh, so I'm gonna make it double for the first parameter and since it's easy to add two number two double numbers together I'm gonna make the second parameter also a double and just to keep things really simple the return type is also going to be a double so if you add two no doubles together you will get a double as a result okay so let's set them as Java methods okay so there you have it two overloaded methods um, in this particular case I want to go one step further and I also want to demonstrate how to model overloaded constructors but for that normally you would model your constructors first but hey, the other way around is also possible anyway first I need to create an attribute and I'm gonna, gonna name this attribute name which is gonna be the name of the simple calculator which is going to be of the string data type I'm going to set to private like most attributes and then I'm going to create a constructor so again I'm going to drag a operation and what makes a constructor a constructor? well it needs to be the exact same name as the cal q later as the class name and naturally I'm gonna drag another one which is going to be named a very simple calculator and again I get a warning but I'll deal with that in a moment 
So, actually right now. So I'm going to have my default null argument, zero argument constructor. And I'm going to have my overloaded constructor. So what's the difference? What makes a constructor overloaded? Well, simply make sure the parameter list is different. So in this case, I'm going to add a parameter named name because I'm going to set the name, which is of the data type string. So there we go. I can maintain it public, but I need to attach the profile because else I can't s configure this method as a constructor. And naturally I need to set the is constructor property to true. So there you go. So now we have two overloaded methods and two overloaded constructors. So let's now go ahead and generate the code. But before I do, I'm going to rename this project from my previous video, which was the inheritance example. Why? Because else my code will be overwritten. Okay, so let's generate the Java code this time. So there we go, we have a new model project with a very simple calculator class. So there we go, so we have uh, name, get name, set name. Add two numbers with two integers, add two numbers with two doubles, you can note the same name. And I have my default constructor and my overloaded constructor. So in this case, to just do a quick implementation, the default constructor will just set name to null. The overloaded constructor will set the name to the name provided. And add two numbers is simply going to return uh, num1 plus num2. And the overloaded method will do the exact same thing. The only difference is, is that the parameters are doubles here. Okay, so that's basically my class, and to just very quickly test it, just to prove that I modeled it correctly, I'm going to type test calculator. There we go. So I'm going to create an instance of a very simple calculator. So there we go, I can invoke this, I can basically use the default constructor like I'm doing now to create the object, but I can also use the overloaded constructor by invoking it. As you can see, no error occurs because my uh, Java compiler will automatically switch between uh, one version of the method or the other version if necessary. Same thing I can do by add two numbers, so I can add seven and 5, which are integers. And I can also do the same thing with doubles, so 4.1 and 3.2. So there you go. As you can see, no errors occurs, because in this case it will simply take the method with the integers, and in this case it will simply take the method with the double. However, if I do this, try and squeeze... Uh, oh, of course this does work. Uh, why is that? Because this can serve as a double, and this is a double, so it's double-double. Yeah, I would have to do uh, a bit more tricks to actually get this to crash. Um, for example, if I add another number, there's no version of this method with three parameters, so therefore I will get an error. So as a matter of fact, it will even suggest to me to create the method add to number with integer, 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 meaning create a third overloaded method. Okay, that's in a nutshell how we model overloaded methods inside a class. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you, and see you next time.